Welcome to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. Thanks for joining us this week. So I know every week you hear me say the same thing on the onset of the show, but of course I want to give you the free gift. So if you haven't downloaded already, please, please go to my website and take your free communication style assessment. You get a report spotlighting your superpowers and how you are perceived in the world. And the flip side, you also get your lowest score, which is your blind spot, your the 180 degree way you do not communicate, if you will. And you get a report on that so that when you do talk to people who do not communicate the way you do, they still understand you. And if you go to my website, whitmanassos.com slash CSA, that is my free gift to you as you navigate change in your life. Now, my motivational quote today is by Gail Blank. And Gail says, when we throw out the physical clutter, we clear our minds. When we throw out the mental clutter, we clear our souls. As I look back, I can recognize uh, decisions I've made because they just simply felt right to me at the time. So I'll give you an example. Just shy of three years ago, uh, we moved, we relocated, downsized. And the first thing I did, boxes everywhere, but the first thing I did, I said to my husband, you have to put the wreath on the door and the mat on the front step, you know, the welcome mat on the front step. He looked at me like, like I was crazy. We have boxes in every room, right? And that's your focus. And I said, I, I just need it to be done. Six months later, I was part of a networking event and they had a feng shui expert. And on the call, the woman talked about the first impression is your front door. So here's, I, I responded in a feng, feng shui, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but feng shui way not even knowing it. And, and at the networking event, she said it was intuitive for me because I want to make sure people feel welcome and that I have positive energy coming from my home. Fascinating. This whole topic is so fascinating. So wait, I have a guest. Don't worry. My guest today is Jen Boyd. Now, Jen is the founder of Elements of Harmony, and her exclusive online blueprint program helps corporate professionals create harmony and balance within themselves and their home so they can create happiness and flow in all areas of their life. Sign me up, right? Now, Jen provides a down-to-earth approach to feng shui, making the ancient study understandable for today's lifestyle. It also places emphasis on the importance of self-care and honoring your personal chi. Since 2003, as a uh, certified feng shui practitioner, Jen has worked with hundreds of feng shui clients all over the world. So please help me welcome my amazing expert, Jen, to the show. Jen, thanks for being on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, we're gonna have a great conversation. Okay, so this is one of my uh, secret pleasures, if you will. This, the whole concept, and, and Jen and I, we met through networking or something, and then we met one-on-one -on -one last week. Mm -hmm. And that's when we were talking about feng shui. And I said, oh, I really need you to come on my show <laughs> because this is a delightful conversation. And it's just such an important topic that I think we, yeah, 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 feng shui, but we don't really know what it is. So first question, Jen, how did you get started in this very cool world of feng shui? Oh, so I actually, uh, in 2001, I was living in Atlanta and I had a corporate marketing career. Um, I was going right up the ladder. Um, I was doing very well with my career. Uh, but I was overwhelmed. I was stressed. I was burned out. Um, on paper, my life looked great. You know what I mean? Um, my, my career was going well, but I was suffering on the inside and something needed to change, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. Mm. And it was ironically, uh, I was living in Atlanta at the time and I grew up in Sarasota, Florida. And I went home on a weekend to visit my mom in Sarasota. And I walked in the door and she's like, oh, I'm I'm feng shui, you know, she had these feng shui books and she's like, I'm feng shui my house. And I'm like, you're feng what? Like, what are you doing? I mean, I literally was like, what is my mom up to now? Right. But the thing is, here's what's so cool is because I was visiting with her that weekend, I nosedived into the feng shui books that she had. And I was like, this is powerful. Oh my gosh. Like I feel empowered. I can make changes in my life by simply understanding natural elements in my space and making changes. And so I went back to Atlanta and started shifting and changing. And I started to feel more peaceful. I got a promotion at work. I got a raise. You know what I mean? I started to see things. And then I started like helping my girlfriends. 
Um, and they started making changes. And then I went back home to visit with my mom another time and she had wanted to get a, a new job. And so I helped her feng shui her house and she got like a new job. So I was like, okay, the universe is trying to tell me something here. <laughs> so that's how I got started. And it's just been this beautiful evolution over 20 years. And now I'm a full-time feng shui practitioner, have an online program and have, have witnessed the amazing, uncanny results that feng shui can produce in your life. So I'm giggling the word overwhelm. I just feel like I'm hearing it everywhere, right? And, and everybody is overwhelmed. I think the, the and I'll, I'll just share with you again, the energy of the world, right? Uh, 20, COVID 2020, 2021 was a very hard year for most people as well. The energy of the universe, right? Whatever the numerology of, of last year was, was definitely heavy. And it changed the beginning of February. And I physically, mentally, emotionally have felt a shift in my own energy and perspective where before it was a little bit more overwhelmed. I was a little bit more negative about things. And I'm usually the hopeless optimist. And I kept thinking, what is going on with me? And then the energy shifted, right? in the world. And I, I feel like myself again. So this feng shui that we can, so that's on the global level, right? Well, okay, Connie, great. Let's not worry about the world. Can we worry about my home office or can we worry about my own home? The other thing you said that I was giggling is you were, you were in corporate successful on paper. You know, you were rocking it, man, right? You yeah. were, you were the, the picture of success yep. and yet you felt overwhelmed and not satisfied and all of those other emotional things. Most of my corporate clients, I hear all the time overwhelmed. Here's the interesting thing though, Jen, my, now that COVID hit, right. And now I'm networking with small business, small business owners like yourself, right. Like myself, I'm doing more of that where before mm -hmm. it was more corporate, right. Going to meet corporate people and, um, overwhelm that word keeps coming up over and over again for the business owner. And I think people in corporate think, well, when you have your business, you have more control. Eh, maybe. Right. But where do we gain that control? So next question, right. I, I shared the energy of the world, the energy, let's shrink it back down to the energy of the home. Why does the energy in the home affect the quality of our life? Like you described with your mom, with you, with your friends, and then going back to your mom and, and helping find that, that job. How does that affect the home? I'm just curious. Right. So this is such a great question. So your environment reflects and affects what's happening in your life. And so when we engage, what I always like to say is when we make friends with the energy in our home, mm -hmm. we can actually have it help us to manifest and increase and improve the quality of our life. So, so there's a couple aspects of feng shui. We're working with um, kind of a roadmap, which is the bog, which is the feng shui map. We can actually start to diagnose what's happening within our life by understanding how key areas of our space are representing areas of our life. And then we can look there to see what's either supportive or unsupportive. And then the other wonderful thing is we're adding in the five elements. And when we work with the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, uh, we can see if there's... Um, you know, if you've ever been in a space that feels really good, it's probably because all five elements are there. Or if there's a space that feels off, it's typically because one of the elements is either excessive or deficient. And so when we're working naturally and holistically with these principles, the space comes into balance. We feel more at ease, at peace. We see things manifest. It's, it's a really beautiful, very natural, easy, peaceful process. Can you give me an example? of, of a manifestation. Give me an example. Like you talked about the five elements. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, I have wood. Okay. I have metal, which I would think would be my computer and like my microphone and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's elements of metal, um, water. I mean, I have my water bottle, but I don't know that I have a water element in here. I have, um, like a, I have the money tree, the green plant. I have gem. I have uh, citrine, uh, a huge cathedral of, of citrine mm -hmm. over there. To, so give, give examples that you would have in your home office or in your space or in your living room that you mm -hmm. get where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so, so we can either bring the elements in with the, the, the item that is actually made of the element, like your plant or, you know, your earth energy with your stones or metal energy. Um, or we could also bring it in with items that represent 
represent it, like a piece of artwork. So let's say you need to bring more flow into your life. Maybe it's bringing in a water feature or a piece of artwork that has um, a beach scene or a, you know, a, a gentle river flowing or something that feels, let's say you need to feel more stable. Maybe it's bringing in artwork that feels stable. So you can always, or maybe it's personal items. You know, it's like for metal, um, like for me, I, we had this conversation earlier. So like I own a horse. So the metal energy on my desk is always Rio's lucky shoes for metal energy. So that's just me. Cause that's something that's very personal to me. I mean, it could be anything. It could be a metal bowl. It could be something that you got as a gift from a special person in your life. I mean, it really, this, it's all about your own personal style. It's not about having to follow like hard and fast rules. It's really finding what uh, feels good to your heart. So see, I'm so glad I asked that follow-up question, Jen, because the water element, I'm literal, right? I think literally. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, you know what? I really don't have any, like a, a, a little fountain or anything in my room. Now, then you said you can have a painting mm -hmm. and I oh, have sure. a um, Thomas Kincaid. I'm looking at it. It's a, it's a, uh, my husband, I love the water. We love um, uh, lights. What do you call the uh, lights at the end of the to protect the the ships coming in what do you call that lighthouse lighthouse thank you oh my goodness talk, talk about a senior moment so anyway we it's, it's lighthouse up and then it has the rocks and the the water coming against and flowing back and you know the thomas kincaid it's very lit the way he paints mm -hmm. that there's energy and light to it and it's one of my favorite pieces that my husband and i have you know, purchased through the years. So as soon, see, that's why I asked my follow-up questions. I do have a beautiful water element. I would never have considered that a water element. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yep. Uh, so I hope everybody found that helpful. So look in your room, look in your space right now. Do you have a water ele element that's in a picture? Do you have metal? Do you have all of those uh, components of the uh, wind, fire, right? All of those, right? Is that what we're talking about? Wood, fire, earth, metal, and metal. Or yeah. wood, fire, earth, metal and water a uh, fire could be a candle i would think or a picture yeah, or of something or right yep okay. mm -hmm. all right now how do we find balance with and you started with the corporate but i'm also going to throw in small business owner you haven't left your desk since last sunday mm -hmm. thus you're going to go see your horse after we're done recording yes. right yes. how do we find balance with our stressful careers period whatever that means to the people listening so that, that's a really great question. So when I started doing feng shui, one of the things that it led me to was really focusing on my own energy. And I started a meditation practice, um, gratitude journal. You know, I definitely, okay. I mean, I, 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 I do work a lot to honor my business. I also love what I do. You know what I mean? So work doesn't feel, me too. Like, it's not like, yeah, yeah. it's not like fingers on a chalkboard. Right, and right. down. I mean, it's actually because I'm like, oh my God, like this is so exciting and fun and things are happening and it's, it's fun. Um, but I do take time. I have a meditation practice that I meditate every morning. I meditate every evening. Um, you know, I have meditate, you know, meditations. And so the meditation for me, um, meditation works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for some. So it's finding that one thing, um, that I, I always like to ask this question to my clients. What is the one thing that you always feel like you want to do, but you never make time to do That's typically the one thing that you could add into your life that will bring balance. Interesting. So I want to comment on that in two ways. Meditation. I have a, my older son, he's 25 and um, monkey mind. Right. And so what he found just through trial and error was trying to meditate, listening to podcasts on meditation and all of that. And so one of the recommendations through a podcast was to go and just go for a walk. And we, where I live, we have some beautiful parks around us. So he happened to go down the street to the park, went for a walk through the woods and came home. And he said, I, I'm a new person. And Nature. what we found out is they, they call that a, um, a natural shower or something. There's an energy shower or something, but so I, I said to him, that's movement meditation. He like, he's a, he's a mover. He, he likes to move his body and work out and things like that. So by him being in nature and walking, right. Exp expelling that energy, it cleared his thoughts. So he was able to actually meditate, even though he was moving and just enjoying the nature around him. 
Um, the other thing I wanted, so that was him. The other thing, when you just said that, what if, if there was something that you could do, like if I had time, I would do for me, it would be read. So recently um, I had a guest on the show and the book was about um, meditate, profitable meditation or something. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I'm always looking to grow my business, grow my life, right? To it, it just expand my own energy. And it's reading the meditation. And I have to tell you, I, I, one Sunday, I was very out of sorts. I thought, let me just see what this book is about. And I sat and I started reading it. I was a new person after. So I think for the meditation for me is when I read meditation, mm -hmm. I'm still, it, it allows, because my mind never quiets. It's a form for me to calm myself down and still meditate, but I'm reading it. And that I found very helpful. Does that make sense? They were just two examples for those that find meditation, traditional meditation hard. Yeah, I, um, I would say also, like, I think nature is probably our best prescription out there, yes, like yes. spending time in nature, um, going for walks in nature, trees, like my horse, you know, finding whatever that is, being on the water, you know, whatever that is, nature is probably our best biggest healer out there. Um, yeah, reading. Um, I would also say like with my meditation practice, we have, I mean, there is a little bit of structure to it. I mean, it's completely free, but it, there, you can work with a trainer that helps you like there's a guide, you know what I mean? And so sometimes when we have a, a guide that helps us, that helps um, the process go a little bit easier as well. So I do do better with guided meditations than just listening to music and, and meditating on my own. I don't do well with that guided meditation. Again, I'm visual as they're speaking the visual, you know, you're on a beach, there's a door climb yeah. down that what do those stairs look like and feel like oh. that works for me. So the guided meditation I do oh. find helpful. In my meditation, we're just focusing on our heart. We're not doing any of like when I said guided, I mean, there, there's a trainer, but you're still, it's quiet, but, but it's just finding, I think anything that you can find that you can anchor to yeah. within yourself, it's learning to anchor within right. your own heart. Yeah. So however, however that works. Um, and I don't think there's any one way up the mountain, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's, it's all, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. really finding what well, we're not cookie people. cutter. No. And then, but when you do find something that works, um, and then just making it like a total priority. I'm so curious feng shui, like what an, it's an odd, it's an odd word, right? Where, where did it come from? What, like, what's the meaning of feng shui? Do you know? Do you know? Question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Feng shui means wind water. And this really ties into what we were talking about. So um, the wind represents the unseen energy, our mind, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our subconscious, and then the water, um, the shui part is our physical environment. So as we think we become, and then we can also use our physical environment to help us manifest what's most important in our life. It's just this beautiful dance. Feng shui means wind, water, our thoughts, our mind, our emotions creates, you know, our physical environment. And it, it all works together. It's really under, I mean, if we were to take the words feng shui out of it, it's really understanding the law of attraction. Ah, oh, love it. Okay, next question. How do we create more flow in our home and in our life? Well, that that's that's the that's the million dollar question, right? So um <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is, right? Truly. So 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 that's feng shui really helps, it gives us easy, simple, like very approachable, like the way I practice feng shui is very much, very easy to understand. And you can make simple and subtle changes. This is not about having to move. It's not about having to do a renovation. Sometimes just understanding how to align your space with intention and the natural elements and working with the Bagua, which is the feng shui map, you would be surprised as how your life can transform. Can, okay. So give me, you work with clients all the time. Can you give me an example of a physical change that you recommended mm -hmm. and what that transformation was like, you know, tangibly, right. In, mm -hmm. in, 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 perhaps in an intangible result, but you get what I'm saying. So what was, give me an example with a client. 
couple great stories. Okay. So uh, there was a woman one time that I was working with. And when we were looking at her front door area, which is considered where her front door was located, it was in the career area. And she had locked her front door. She had about 20 boxes for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but she was using her foyer area as a storage area. Don't know why. Um, so I asked her, I said, so tell me how, as a feng shui consultant, I'm like, the front door is the mouth of the chi, the mouth of opportunity. It's where like our career opportunities come in. So all the red flags were going off for me. So I said, hey, how's it going with your career? You know, and her eyes well up with tears. And she's like, you know what? My husband's been out of work for 20 weeks. It's been really, really hard. So I said, well, how would it be if we were to take the boxes down, activate your front door and get some energy flowing? Um, and so she did that. She made it. She's like, absolutely. She made all the changes. She called me, I think like two or three weeks later. And she's like, he got a job. So whatever that stuck energy. Now he still had to send out resumes, still had to do the thing. But if there was stuck energy that opened the flow. Sure. So, I mean, I've had clients that have manifested prosperity. I've helped moms get, I mean, I have, I, I know women that have gotten pregnant, attracted relationships new careers. I mean, there's a woman in my um, program, just, I just talked to her a few weeks ago and she just landed a new career. I mean, there's, you can really, the, the Bagua outlines the nine key areas of life. So it's just really what's most important to you. I mean, I've, I've had clients that have focused on health and then they were struggling to find uh, the right specialist and they, we feng shui their house and now they've got the right doctor. And so they're healing. I mean, it just, it's kind of, intention what is the intention that you're right. looking to achieve yeah so there's not just one thing i mean you can really um because everybody is unique and I, I agree no again no cookie cutter right we're all unique and beautiful in our <laughs> own um you know way but the How principle but the principles are straightforward do you know what i'm saying they're simple and they're straightforward and so when you're utilizing the principles your intentions can be whatever they are, but the principles are, they're, they're, they're simple to understand. Um, I, I have a weird question. I have a colleague and a friend uh, when they, they do uh, presentations and stuff together, um, this couple stays with him and that she's in feng shui expert, uh, JJ and Fitzane and, and shout out to her, but she puts up, um, I believe a, a, like a covering a blanket over the mirror in the bedroom. I'm just, I've always been curious as to what, why, like why, why is the mirror in the bedroom or covering it important? It's a great question. So mirrors are activators of energy. So they're going to reflect whatever is going on. And so uh, in the bedroom, typically we want to create a peaceful environment, tranquil. And so when you have something like a mirror that's activating energy, you're just creating more energy flow. And so oftentimes when people are unable to sleep, they're having sleep problems or, um, you know, or energy going on with their relationship, a lot of times we can look to see what is the mirror reflecting because you also want to make sure. Um, so, so in the bedroom, we might put a cover over a mirror or maybe take a mirror down so that it is quiet. So it kind of calms down the energy. Um, but yeah, it's just really understanding that whole energy. Okay. I'll crack it up. So never have I heard that, what you just said, other than that curiosity. And he said it in passing. Yeah. She puts up a cover over the mirror and it's feng shui thing. So he, he wasn't an expert and it just, it, now that I'm talking to you, this popped into my head. I am a very poor sleeper. I've always been. And so now I think I'm going to start covering <laughs> my husband's going to think I'm crazy, Jen, but I'm going to yeah, trying it. Yeah. I, I'm going to test it and see because, and here's the other thing. I have such a high energy and at night for me to reel my energy in so I can sleep is super hard. So if my energy is reflect and the mirrors on my side, literally right on my side of the bed. So I'm, I guess we're doing a dance all night. That mirror and I are reflecting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's right by your bed, then you're really, it's just, it's, there's no, there's no end to the energy. Just move. Yeah. So I would, I would figure out a way to maybe calm that down a little bit. I will report back everyone yes, listening. Please. I will, Connie's going to put the sheet over the, over the, the, the uh, mirror to, to create a tranquil energy in my bedroom. And I will report back on how that goes. I love it. Um, just giggling. Cause I, when you said, usually if you're a poor sleeper, I'm like uh, ding, ding, ding. Hello. Have you met me? <laughs> 
<laughs> Next question, Jen. How can uh, Feng Shui help us to become us internally, that better version of self, like almost at the soul level, right? Uh, so with feng shui is like when I work with my clients, the first step, it's not like trying to just like move a bunch of stuff. We create a vision. We get very clear on our intentions. Then we can see what's either supportive or unsupportive in our environment. Mm -hmm. Then we start making simple and subtle changes. And then that affects how we become the best version of ourselves. We start to look around. I mean, that's what happened with me 20 years ago is I started to look around my house in Atlanta and I was like, that is like, so not me anymore. That's old Jen. That's not supportive. That doesn't feel good anymore. And it started just eliminating. I started removing stuff and I started adding in the stuff that felt nourishing to me. And that's when I noticed the biggest change. So it's just, it, you just understand like who you want to become. And then you align your space. First of all, you take the stuff out that doesn't match that. Cause a lot of times we do have stuff. It could be that old piece of artwork that we've hung up in our house that we've hung out of obligation. Maybe we got it from a family member or a friend or something sure. like, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? Or it's that thing, uh, that item, that personal item that doesn't really, maybe it's something we got um, at a different time in our life. That's not really relevant to today. You start, you'd be amazed at how much, when you start changing stuff and adding in the stuff that who is who you are or who you're becoming your best version uh, those things really make an impact. Subtle changes, Subtle changes. big impact, big impact. Right. And you'd be surprised. I mean, it's, it, it, yeah, sometimes you're, you're, and this is the thing is sometimes we, I think we're so busy that we don't think to look around our space, yeah. but then when we do, when we slow down for like just a moment, we put our feng shui glasses on and we can see like, oh my gosh, that thing doesn't, that's not me anymore, or that doesn't feel good or something like that. And we make those changes and then we set a new intention. And then it's like, it, it like brings light and brightness and good energy. Love it. Why do you find most professionals seem to feel stuck um, just with different aspects of their lives or life stages? What do, what do you see with your clients? Why they're stuck? Uh, Why do most professionals do you find feel stuck in some aspect of their lives? What, what are, you know, what are, typical things that you hear over and over again. There's got to be some patterns, I would imagine. Sure, sure. They're stuck with relationships. They're stuck with financial stuff. They're stuck with figuring out what are the next steps of my career? What are my business? And so again, it's just really dialing in and looking at those areas of their space to see uh, what's matching or not. I remember one of my corporate clients, this is years ago. This is a great, great thing. Uh, he, so his wife, was really into feng shui, but he was along for the ride as well. It, <laughs> it was interesting in his career area. He was like, yeah, I feel like everything at my, he was like a VP of something, some important, you know, big company, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I feel like everything is like a game. I feel like all the, you know, it, like it's very corporate, very political and everything is like, it's almost like, uh, everything is like a game. And in his career area, they have a chessboard which is very, you know what I mean? It's very like highly strategic and stuff. So we talked about moving that to more uh, like the creativity, more playful area rather than positioning a very strategic game that felt, you know, when they kind of, the story behind the chessboard and everything in their life, it was kind of like a piece that, do you see how that was just kind of relatable to just feeling heavy? Well, because chess. Okay. So my understanding, I'm just going to tell you what I heard and how I'm relating that to, to my perspective, right? Chessboard is extremely strategic, difficult yeah. game, right? And it's not one and done, right? It's not a quick boop done. There's, there's a, a, a whole process, right? To win at, at chess, unless you're, you know, some great chess player. Um, so he was finding work to be this game, right? This strategic game and that there was all this politics going on. So was that weighing him down and getting him stuck? Am yeah. I understanding? Yeah, he felt stuck. He felt, he definitely felt stuck. So and they so again, moved it's the chessboard. That, that, yeah. So we moved the chessboard to like the fun area. You know, I think we moved it to, I can't remember which area we moved it to, but it, it just relieved that energy of feeling career didn't have to be like a strategic game to like 
every day coming in, being on, right? And and not letting your guard down and that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think he he felt that. And it was so, the, I, this is like years ago, but I, I just remember his words and like seeing the chessboard there. And it's like, well, everything that you're saying is just reflecting with yeah. that. Fascinating. Fascinating. We have time for one more question. Okay. Um, and I've heard this term chi used in the past, right? Which is our energy source. I think I'm, I could be wrong, but what are the keys to honor our own personal chi and maybe define what chi is? So chi is energy. It's, it's simply just energy. So it's working with the energy within your own self, as well as the chi within your space. And so what was the second question? What are the key ways to honor our personal chi? The key ways to honor our personal chi is to live with what you love and to make time for yourself and to create an environment that allows you the space and time so that you can really, um, you know, become the best version of yourself and really living with what you love. Yeah, it, I think sometimes we let clutter take over. And that's, that's dangerous, right? I think I started, my quote was, you know, cluttered mind. We can't even think clearly. The other thing is you were describing, you know, things that don't serve us anymore, meaning that it was the old Connie, not the new Connie, right? So uh, there are things where I'll see something like on my shelves or whatever. And I think, oh my God, I haven't even looked at that. Is that still there? You don't even realize it's there. It just becomes part of, right? The, the backdrop of my office, my living room, whatever it might be. So be, you, if I heard again correctly, be very um, strategic or thoughtful in when you see something, an item, look at it. Is it serving me? Does it make me feel good? Is it like, oh, that old thing, right? So how, what's, what's the emotional resonance I get from when I look at that item? Is that, does that make sense? What I just said, Jen? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's understanding your emotional attachment or feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to say items have like, there's two kinds of energy. There's an intrinsic energy. It's actually, what is the item actually made of? Like, um, mm -hmm. is it, is it a stone that has intrinsic value, but then there's also the other energy that is like, what is our perception? What is our feeling? What is our memory of the thing? Do you know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. you know what I mean? It's um, so those two things kind of play into what feels good. But then when we are using the Bhagwan, our own intention, that adds another layer of understanding where things can be positioned in the best optimal way to support us. Yeah. And I, I was thinking when you said, you know, somebody gave you a picture or a painting and you have it on the wall. And every time you look at it, you're almost irritated, but out of guilt, that person you know, stops by and says, Oh, I love that you have my painting up still. So out of guilt, you keep the stupid thing up. But every time you look at it, you're like, Ugh, right. That would be something you should probably get rid of. <laughs> do do keep I have a person keep the person? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually have a great, do I have, can I share this one? Really yeah, please, please. Okay. Got it. So I remember there was a, a woman um, that I had helped her feng shui her house. And right when you walked in the door, there was this really large red abstract piece of artwork. And it was, I mean, you couldn't miss it. I mean, as soon as you walked in, you saw this big red piece of artwork. And so, you know, so I was like, Hey, so tell me about this piece. And she's like, Oh my gosh. She's like, my sister made that. She's an artist. Um, not my, myself, my husband and my two kids, none of us like the piece. And I'm like, right. So, but it's, it's, you can't not miss it. She's like, I know, but my sister made it. She's an artist, but she's very angry and she's, you know, all this kind of stuff. But, and so we had this big conversation. She's like, I can't take it down. I'm like, okay, well, what if we were to replace it with something else? And they had just gone to Greece as a family vacation. And she had these two beautiful pieces of artwork from Greece. So we ended up taking that down, putting the two pieces of artwork from Greece up. And then we moved the red piece because out of obligation, we moved it downstairs to the rec room by the pool table. So still honoring your sister, but not like the centerpiece of the home. And it was so ironic because after those changes were made, her daughter walked through, 12-year-old daughter, didn't know anything about, She's she looks at us and she goes, it feels better in here. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's, it's like, but I remember the look on her face. She's like, none of us here like that piece. So yeah, your artwork is powerful. It tells the story of your life. So if you want to change the story of your life, change your artwork. I love it. That's so amazing. I have um, a, a 
a friend of mine down in Florida and um, he's a phenomenal artist and mm-hmm. paints and just gets better and better and better. And he posted on Facebook and we had just moved. And this one picture is a beach scene and I'm a beach girl. Right. And, and I, in the Facebook, I said, Johnny, you are just oh, off the charts, getting better and better. That piece, like my, my heart leapt. Like I felt so connected and this, you know, this particular one well done, you know, and he, Oh, thank you so much. It's yours. You know, joke. And I go, yeah, yeah, it's mine. I I'll keep coming back to the Facebook page. Fast forward, we move about three weeks later, I get this delivery it was the painting. And so, yes, can you imagine? And so I took it and I had it framed. I spent quite a bit on the frame, but it almost looks like driftwood around. The frame is just gorgeous too. And I have it so that it's on my stairwell, which sounds funny, but I pass this picture 50 times a day because it's, it's, it's in line sight of no matter what room I'm going into up or down. Cause I have a three floor house. So it's on the main floor and it's up or down the stairs going into the kitchen and living room, going up to the bedroom. Awesome. I see that picture. And every time I draw, it's so funny. Cause every time I look, I walk by it, I look at it and I go, Johnny, I love my picture. And I send him love because I love my picture. It's tranquil. It's a, it, what did you say before? An anchor. It's one of the anchors in my, in my life. Definitely for sure. And my husband equally loves the picture. So isn't that funny? It's um, very, very and good. Water. See again, the water, the water for me is my, is my anchor. Love it. Ah, oh, so many questions, so little time. So everyone, I know you need more Jen and you're thinking, wait, but wait, I have more. I have more questions. Please go to uh, Jen's website, which is elements, plural of harmony.com. So elements of harmony.com email her di- directly. Jen is J E N one N at elements of harmony.com. Also, she has a free gift. I will put that in the show notes as well. The link, uh, just quickly, the, the three gift is the free gift is 18. It's, it's a free guide to 18 feng shui principles. And it's basically, um, over, well, now it's been longer than that, but I created it when at like 18 years. So it's kind of like the things that I had, the top things that I had learned over 18 years of being a feng shui practitioner. Love it. Love it. Love it. So that's uh, Jen's free gift to all of us. So thank you, Jen, for that. I will put it all in the show notes. Uh, reach out, man. If you have a question, just reach out to Jen and ask her. She she knows her stuff, right? She's been doing this for, for two decades. So again, Jen at Elements of harmony.com. Uh, no worries. I promise I'll put that in the show notes for you. Uh, Jen, thank you for being on. Thank you for sharing all of this great wisdom. And again, I love th- my takeaway for today is subtle changes can create huge impact and huge results in our life. So I, I like easy to get to transformation. And I think that's tangible for people when people hear, oh, that's not so hard. So I could do that, right? I, I highly recommend, and I'm sure that the, the free gift will give them some outlines and, and ways to relook at things that we've been looking at day in, day out, right in our space, and maybe a different way to look at things to create that transformational change. So thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Me too. Thank you. I hope I didn't ask stupid questions. No, no, my gosh. I love it. No, it's all great. (laughs) Yeah. I'm so curious. And this is one of those topics where I don't know much about. So I'm like a sponge where, you know, but again, I hope they weren't ridiculous questions. So thank you for your, uh, for your genius, your zone of genius. I'd also like to mention, I have a YouTube channel too. They can find me if they just do Jen Boyd feng shui, they can find me on YouTube. Awesome. If you send me that link also, guys, I'll put that in the show notes so that you have it easy peasy. You can click and find Jen that way. So I'll put that in the show notes too. Um, Thank you again, Jen. And thank you for joining me weekly as we question, build and discover together that I know change can be complicated, difficult, right? Makes us pause in life. And I hope between my guests and I and the cool topics like Feng Shui that we spoke about today, help you think about just something different that you maybe didn't think about yesterday. And that really is the point of the show for me. So I hope my guests and I provide those tips and ideas and strategies just to like, almost like snap in your fingers where you think, oh, I didn't think of that. Let me look into that. Let me, let me review the PDF from Jen. Let me have a conversation with Jen and explore this and how maybe it can impact my life. So again, I hope Jen and I provided some, some cool ideas and, and thought, thought provoking conversation for you. 
I, uh, Jen, thank you again for being on and thank you all for joining me. I, I truly do um, treasure each one of you and that you, I am honored that you're on this journey with me, that uh, we can control change. Again, control is an illusion, but we can control change for us in a very productive way. And I hope the show does that for you. Um, again, I'll see you next week. Have a wonderful, inspired week. Do one thing that Jen recommended today. One thing, apply it and let's see what reaction that creates in your world. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again, Jen. And I'll see you all next week. Have a great one.